Throughout history, horses have been domesticated by mankind for a wide variety of uses, such as sport, agriculture, and heavy work. The draft horse is a work animal prized for their pulling capacity. They have played an important role in history. During the time of the Industrial Revolution, they were used for plowing or pulling agricultural machinery. And as horsepower attached to cars and carriages, hence the name workhorse or draft horse. All draft horse breeds share similar characteristics. They tend to be very tall animals. Their height can range from 1.6 meters all the way up to 1.8 meters at the withers. They possess a great deal of muscle, and their approximate weight ranges from 600 to 1,000 kilos. Among these breeds, there are the Belgian and the Percheron. For this program, we will talk to experts in different regions of Colombia about these breeds. Also, we learned about their characteristics, how to care for them, and what activities are performed with these animals. Belgian breed. If we go back a few years and we look at the first horses that were domesticated, we can see that we always sought large, tall horses. That was what humans originally wanted, that is, very large horses. And we looked for ways to achieve a very large size. That actually resulted in certain complications, in certain health problems, since we bred horses that were so heavy they had problems with their aplomb and conformation. From that point onwards, people started to focus not just on size, but on their conformation. We looked for horses that were easier to handle, that had an easier time working, whose conformation and bone structure facilitated movement and didn't work against it. We started to focus away from aesthetics and towards functionality. So nowadays, those horses that weigh 1,200 kilos are not as common. Now what we seek are horses that weigh between 800 and 900 kilos, maybe even 1,000 kilos. But we're looking for more functional horses that don't have as many a plum and conformation problems that prevent them from working. And work is really their strong point. That is what they are bred to do. It's really useless to have a pretty looking draft horse that cannot work. Belgian workhorses are known throughout the world for being heavy draft horses. They are known as cold-blooded. The temperament of this particular breed is very different than that of the Colombian Criollo horse, since it's very calm, docile, even-tempered, and gentle. That makes it a horse that is easy to work with. It walks slowly due to its large size, body weight, and corporeal strength. This also facilitates its handling. One of the main characteristics of these Belgian horses is that they only come in one color, sorrel, although in some occasions their tone can be either a little lighter or a little darker. Their mane and tails are also white, as is the hair on the lower anterior and posterior areas. These horses are very tall. They are horses whose height ranges between 1.6 and 1.7 meters in height. It's a horse with a very broad chest, which is made for pulling. Their limbs are short, bones thick and solid, with good conformation. The head is larger, more compact, with a flat forehead. Their eyes are sweet looking, not like the eyes of an Arabian that are pointed. Their eyes are, are calm and sweet. They are also called Brabant or Flemish horse. Just like Percherons, they are horses that have been evolved and bred to pull loads for heavy work. They are very resilient horses. Their main characteristic is their sorrel color and their white manes, which is an important detail for people and the general TV audience to note, and it's that in Colombia we always associate large horses with Percheron, but in reality, Percheron only refers to a black and dappled horse. This is a Belgian. 
They are very strong horses, very docile, with many of the same general characteristics of heavy draft horses. They are noble, attentive, willing to work, and they can generate that special energy and bond that you get between humans and horses through work. Heavy draft horses. Heavy draft horses. All horses require special treatment in order to tame them so that they can perform a particular task or exercise. And this breed is not the exception. The work that these animals do, when they start going through the taming process, it takes a lot longer than with Criollo horses. So you don't start taming as young with these horses. You start their training when they are three and a half years old, almost four, when they have attained sufficient muscular skeletal formation. So we can be assured that they can tolerate the strain they will endure and that we won't harm their health or development in any way. These horses are initiated at an early age. Fortunately, they are very docile, which makes it possible for their training to be calm and easy. It also depends on the type of work they are being prepped for, either just as draft horses or if they will be ridden as well. We start off working with ropes. First, the horse must be tamed from the back and from its mouth. Afterwards, we can begin with hitching loads, but that is done progressively. First, they are attached to carriages without any weight so that they can get used to it. Then they begin walking backwards, turning, walking forward, and lastly, they begin the exhibition or load carrying work that you need. Basically, the job of these animals is to pull and carry. This is their true function. Esta es la de ellos. Por esto... For this reason, the horses are bred, raised, and genetically improved. Todos estos All of these processes are focused on their load-carrying function and the job they have to fulfill. In Colombia, these draft breeds also have been used for sports, pleasure riding, and recreation. A good percentage of them is found in the high plains of Cundinamarca. I would say that Bogota is the place where draft horses have survived. It's the place where they have had the most support, where the Colombian Association of Draft Horses has fought so much for them, raising them so they can improve every day so that the new lines that are being bred in the United States and Europe can arrive here and they can evolve into the animals we want to raise. Percheron breed. The Belgian is not the only draft horse breed. Among this group of heavy draft horses, there is also the Percheron. Let's explore some of its characteristics. These are some of the breeds that we have here at the equine station. Among the draft breeds, there is a great deal of variety. We have two of the most important and recognized breeds in the world. This one here is a Percheron. This is a breed that originated in France, and they are characterized by their two most common colors, which are black and dappled. These horses are called draft horses or cold-blooded horses. When we talk about cold-blooded, we are referring to character and temperament, never to body temperature. These are horses bred to pull and for traction on the field, as well as for recreation, entertainment, and sport. Dappled Percheron. This is another one of our breeding studs. This is a horse that was imported from Argentina. It shows another of the colors that you can find in Percheron horses. We find them in black, dappled, or in a color that we call rosillo or red dappled. Speaking of feeding requirements, people have the impression that because they are large horses, they eat a lot. It's logical that a horse will eat proportional to its size, and the amount of feed is tied to that weight and that body volume. 
but they have a given conversion capacity, meaning that they don't necessarily have to eat large amounts of food in order to sustain a body like this. Once they reach a normal body conditioning, as you can see in these horses, which are of a normal size, these horses tend not to be overly fat or overly skinny. Because of the work that they do, they tend to be very athletic. So perhaps people have some misconceptions with regards to larger horses. Really, what sets these breeds apart is their conversion capacity. That is, their ability to convert more of their food into muscle mass. This is the same with human beings and other living beings, depending on their genetic traits, their breeds, and they will have a higher or lower conversion ratio, no matter how much they eat. As you can see, these are very heavy horses, very large in size and very strong. I think nature is very wise. I think it gave them outsized strength and size, but it also calmed down their temperament because otherwise they would be extremely difficult to handle. This makes them more docile or quote, more goofy, end quote. But this is also what makes them such a powerhouse in work and in sport. So those are their main traits. They are very peaceful and manageable animals but also very strong and powerful. And if we know how to harness this strength, then we will benefit greatly, as is the case here in the park. Their role is to pull the carriages carrying tourists and take them around the park. They work in a system that I call a trunk. When we talk about a trunk in light of heavy draft horses, we're talking about a carriage pulled by two horses at once so that they can divide the load and so that the horses can perform their job well. Heavy draft horses. Heavy draft horses. A draft horse requires specialized care and conditions that are a function of its job. To learn more about this, Carlos spoke to us about how these animals have adapted to these conditions. Everything undergoes a process of evolution, conditioning, and adaptation. These horses were first imported many years ago. And as with many other species that have been imported into Colombia over the years, they had to adapt to this tropical climate. We have imported equine and bovine livestock from Europe, United States, and other seasonal countries. These horses traditionally belong in these colder climates. If we were to talk about optimal conditions for them, then we could say that they favor lower temperatures. They work better at higher altitudes as well. At any rate, they have had time to adapt. And nowadays, you find them well adapted to all altitudes and climates. They are very resistant. Unlike the Percheron, there are a number of breeds that are more sensitive to temperature. Among these is the Belgian breed. It's a breed that is affected by high temperatures. They become agitated and tire easily. However, it's a function of managing the adaptation. Generally, all of these breeds are very resistant and easy to handle. Their nobility and tranquility are expressions of their true nature. These character traits help them to better endure their workloads because as they expend more energy, they become more restless and their stress levels tend to increase. Crossbreeds One of the crosses we perform here and generally across the world is creating mules. We know that they result as the cross between a horse and a donkey. This particular animal here has the characteristic that she is the daughter of a draft mare. She is a cross between a Percheron mare and a Catalan donkey, hence her size, her strength, her body size, and her work capacity. This mule is approximately 15 years old. She arrived at the park while she was still very young, and this is what she is known for around here. 
meaning that people admire her a lot because it is rare to encounter a mule of this size. But her size is due to what she inherited from her parents, a Percheron draft mare and a Catalan donkey. That's where she gets her strength and size. We are constantly performing that cross here because, as we all know, mules have a very high work capacity and they're very resilient. So we use them to give our horses a break. For example, if one of our horses has the ability to do a 24 or 30 kilometer route, mules could easily double that workload. So this allows us to increase our work capacity and improve the efficiency of our carriages without wearing out the animals so much. So this is a cross that we do here all the time and with very good results. Mules are noble, docile, and have a very high capacity for work. They can maintain that productivity, that body conditioning, enduring less fatigue. Because she is the daughter of a draft mare, she will inherit that noble character from her mother. So let's say that they can inherit the ease of taming and their ease of working. And because that tranquil temperament they inherit will make it easier and faster to train them. Keep in mind that these animals are trained as draft horses, not so much for riding. You are not training the animal to perform difficult movements or turns or anything like that. Their training is really basic. Go forwards, go backwards, and learn to handle loads. That is all we try to do with draft horses, teach them to tolerate and handle the loads that we are tasking them with. We have had very good results, particularly in terms of endurance. These animals are what allow us to guarantee carriage service to visitors here at the park during times of demand overflow. So that is how mules can offer us an advantage over horses. In Colombia, everyone likes mules, and you can find many comments and stories regarding them. Personally, I think everyone is looking for a good mule, a pretty, fat, large mule. I think that no matter where you place them, these animals will always have lots of admirers. So I think it adds a lot of value to have them here. They're also demanded in the marketplace. Here, we sell a lot of mules like this one, so we're consistently breeding them and handling them. Heavy draft horses. Heavy draft horses. Depending on their activities, all horse breeds must receive specialized nutrition and care especially in the case of heavy draft horses. Let's look into their nutritional and care requirements. These animals have a very sensitive metabolism. These horses weigh anywhere between 850 and 1100 kilos. By contrast, a Criollo horse may weigh in a range between 340 and 400 kilos approximately. In terms of nutrition, they eat 10% of their live weight. So these horses ingest a great deal of grass and fiber. The horses that we keep here eat one bale of hay during the day and another during the night. In addition to hay, these horses can eat approximately 10 kilos of cut grass. The grass they are eating is king grass without any added mixtures. It is grown between 40 and 45 days. After it is cut, it is left to rest for two to three days. Afterwards, it is chopped and fed to the animals throughout the day. At night, we don't feed them cut king grass. Instead, we feed them kikuyo, which is previously baled. It is not completely dry. It is a grass that has been drying for four to five days. In addition to that, we feed them a kilo of feed concentrate every three hours, meaning a total of six kilos of feed per day. We are in a cold climate, but because they are in confinement, their water consumption is very high. This is extremely important, even more so than food. 
they need to have fresh water all day. That is, we change out their water four or five times a day. When the hay is dry, it makes them very thirsty. And add to that the feed and the salt. So they need a lot of water. First of all, for us, it's a special treat to be able to appreciate horses of this magnitude. Compared to these horses, all others seem very small, and I call everything else a small horse, no matter how big they are. Generally speaking, this breed of draft horses have a very noble temperament. We can see that the Colombian Criollo horse has a temper, as well as, I'm not saying either one is better. Thankfully, they have that temper, because it's nice to ride a horse that is very eager. But these horses are made for pulling and dragging. They are patient and know how to wait. Imagine a horse tied to a wagon for four hours waiting to be loaded. A Criollo horse would dig holes and try to eat the harness. He'll be nervous. By contrast, these horses will remain completely calm, just staring ahead. One important detail is that you have to know how to handle these horses. The person in charge of them must be skilled enough to accurately determine when the animal needs something or doesn't. I don't think you can apply strict rules to horse management, nor can you be arbitrary about it. You have to constantly monitor the horse, what it likes, doesn't like, what hurts or doesn't hurt. So we try to keep very competent staff on hand with a highly developed common sense so that they can monitor the situation and make judgment calls with the horses as needed. The contribution of the horse to the development of most civilization is incalculable. But despite all of the services they have rendered to mankind, our gratitude has not translated into humans providing horses with better living conditions. They don't need medals or trophies. They rise above human banality. Let's take care of them and help them feel free. <laughs>